What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Crown Cinema Podcast. In this episode, we literally just watched Alien. Alien. Dude, for a 1979 movie, it looks so good. Like today, it, even today, none of it looks fake, corny, bad. It's pretty impressive. Very impressive movie. I could see why they have just continued to make more. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's almost like Ridley Scott knew, thinking ahead of time, making it, like knowing technology would advance, and he like prepped and like made sure to not show anything. Like he never shows the alien in like full mm-hmm. suit. It's always like in pieces. Everything's all close up, so like there's no way for you to like really. They can't. They're not like using any fake CGI or any like effects to make it look bad. Like they're always just like very carefully showing what they can to make it always look as real as possible. Absolutely. No, I uh, I think this had to be some kind of a shock to people watching movies in the 70s just because they've seen Star Wars at this time and then they see, the, uh, they see a movie like this where it's obviously canon of people that have gone to outer space from Earth and then clearly it's like the worst thing that could possibly happen. Yeah, worst case scenario. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's genius just in that aspect of it. Yeah. It's a badass movie. And it's so like the suspense is so well done. Like, yeah. it's just like a master class in suspense with this alien horror movie. Yeah. No, because it's cool. I mean, you, you get like the whole classic like 70s feel of like what a Hollywood movie looked like in this. But it definitely gave you... And we're back. Technical difficulties. Fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> Fuck it. Thing sucks. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Okay. Anyways, no, I mean, this is, like I said, I we'll we'll, we'll redo that. Okay. No, we're good. I'll, it's okay. Yeah. No, no, no. This is, uh, it gives you the 70s movies feel. This is a great time for movies coming out. A lot of creativity coming your way, I think, in the movie industry. And like I said, Star Wars, I think, is a big phenomenon at this point. Yeah. Just a huge culture that a lot of people are enjoying. Sci-fi's, you know. Sci-fi's booming. Yeah. You know, the we've essentially taken creativity off of the planet. You know, it's not like a Western right. in the 50s, 60s. You know, this is, no, no, no. What could we do? Yeah. But it gives you the eerie feeling and it gives you the shots that, like you said, very well have it its time. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think it's it does such a good job of just like, giving you just small clues of information. Like every single time you learn something new or something gets revealed about the alien, you have like more questions. Yeah. It's like, it just leads you on so much. You're like, what is going on? As it just like builds because it just kind of trickles in information. And I think what makes it so scary is the fact that you don't even, you don't know what's going on. Like you're, you're kind of going through, through it as the characters are without knowing any information. You're like learning it as they know, as they learn, which puts you on edge. Cause like, you don't know what the fuck to expect. It's a, alien movie you don't know what the hell that alien they could come up with anything so like you don't know how this could work yeah absolutely and uh it definitely is funny because it gives you the i think old school movie like feeling of like you as the audience it's like everything that the characters do it's like you would do it you know if you saw an alien probing a human life You'd probably like look into it without thinking what the repercussions would be. You mm-hmm. would just be caught in the moment. Yeah. Well, if you think about it though, the really the only person that's like pushing the bad advice most of the time is the big plot twist, right. the robot who obviously is just there to capture the alien. He's yep. in on it the whole time. Yeah. No, Mr. Milk. <laughs> Mr. Milk. Yeah, Mr. Milk. Um, no, I. Mr. So Mr. That's, milk Sweat. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm ready to go into it. Um, All right. What do you rate it? For being ahead of its time, I'll give it an eight. Damn. I'll give it a nine. Fair enough, yeah. I thought I mean there's really no complaints for me with it. I think it's it's intriguing. It's a nineteen seventy nine movie, does not look like a nineteen seventy nine movie. Yeah. The vibe is very seventies, but it's not doesn't feel old. Like it's it's kind of a timeless movie. I have complaints. Ooh, okay. Scott. Yeah, I'll give it a seven. What? Damn. I, I thought mean, it was gonna be a ten for sure. No, dude. I mean, the cinematography was subpar. Oh, really? Set design is insane. Blew my mind the whole time. How like how much this relied on set design. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great horror film too. 
I wasn't expecting it to be that scary. Yeah. And kind of gross you out. Yeah. Yeah, because wait, can we clarify? Have we... I haven't seen any of the Alien movies. I've seen this one once. Okay. This is my the first only, time seeing I've this. only seen this in movie this too. I haven't seen any other Alien movies. Yeah, this is my first time seeing this movie, and I haven't seen any other movies past. Yeah. Same. Same? I have seen this one. All right, let's talk about the cinematography. I like the cinematography. I thought it was... I did too. I thought for what it was, it was great, because the way they make it eerie is all the close shots and keeping it very tight so you don't really know like what do you not like about it definitely but then there's the moments where it's just like sometimes it's too dark like i get they want to keep it dark for like the alien that kind of stuff but there's times where it kind of just seems like they just didn't have enough lights kind of thing mm -hmm. or like they just have a guy running with a camera um i just i just feel like there's movies with better cinematography at this time yeah maybe but, so but i also feel like i'm gonna look this up but ridley scott likes to build sets to where you don't have to change lighting. The lighting's kind of already built into the set. Mm. So that's probably a factor. Yeah. I, I like the darkness, how it was almost too dark sometimes, because I think it helps the timelessness of it. If it was too bright, you could see some of the fakery maybe, and it might look older. I feel like the darkness almost helped it, helped the realism a bit. Yeah. It's like when you're in the alien world, you know, they obviously, it's cool they built the set in the 70s, but they keep it dark so you don't see past it. So it doesn't like, they're not adding any like fake Mac painting in the back or doing anything that looks not real. So the darkness, I think, kind of helps sell you on the fact they're on an alien planet. But or, kind of what I'm talking about is just maybe a simple close up of a human face. You see light on one side and then just complete darkness on the other side. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Not even like a hint of like some fill light, just a little bounce or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting too because. It seems like, it seems like it's kind of taking a take of like sexism because none of the men in the, uh, in the on the ship listen to Ridley. They all kind of just ignore her, even though she always has the right answers. Nobody listens to her. And there's even some shots where, it's she's talking to the captain to Dallas, and I think she's like telling him he needs to do something. It's like kind of towards the beginning, but he's like on the opposite side of the frame that he should be. He's like he's looking uh, to his left and he's on the left side of the frame. So he's like, usually you'd put him on the right side of the frame where he like is looking into the more space, but it's almost, I feel like it's showing that he's kind of like up in her face, not giving her enough space to like think or make decisions. Like he's kind of like overriding her, uh, her you know, her thoughts. Right. Because I mean, none of them listen to her. Yeah. Which if they had in the very beginning, I mean, none of this happens, but I mean, I don't know. It's uh I got some. I got some things. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. Let All it right. rip. First off, big fan of cigarettes and uh, cigarettes in spaceships. Nice. Yep. Thought that was really cool. Um, let's kick up Star Wars a notch. I like that. <laughs> big fan. Um, I do like how they just kept fucking up as scientists. I mean, well, they're not all scientists. Only, only. Homeboy, only the the robots, the scientists. The for, the Dallas is a captain. She's on the crew. The other guys like a mechanic. They're all like crew members yeah. of their ship. But they still have like a like a textbook that they're supposed to follow. Yeah, they and yeah. they clearly like keep messing all that up. And I don't know. I just think through common sense because what I said earlier about the audience like making the decisions that the actors would have made, not true. <laughs> I was like. Just immediately contradict yourself. Yeah, I mean, I see the spaceship in this planet that first off they weren't supposed to be at, and the first thing they do is like just go balls deep into it. I don't like it. Well, okay, but you got to understand the story is that the ship is supposed to do that. They think they're just mining stuff and going back, but it gets revealed. Remember that they're supposed to. The whole mission is actually them trying to get the alien. So them going out into the alien thing, they're trying to remember. Uh, what's the robots guy's name? Alan Al. What's it? Some of the name? Uh, Ash. Ash. Ash was Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, yeah Bilbo. <laughs> Ash was saying that it's the perfect life form. They wanted to use it as a weapon. The 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 main. It was like mission number one: get the life form and bring it back. Everything else is secondary. Crew members are expendable. So it's saying we don't care about the crew. All we want is this alien back so we can study it. So the whole mission is them trying to get the alien back. That was the whole point. Yeah. So they were just trying to weaponize an alien 
whoever their employers are, they're trying to get this alien, maybe for war, military, some type of weapon. And they know it's this like perfect specimen. You know, Ash talks about how it's like literally the perfect specimen, how it can't, you know, it's hard to kill. It has no emotions, like it has no false sense of morality. Because obviously Rash is a robot. He doesn't believe in any morals. You can see that through the whole movie. He's mm-hmm. like dead-eyed the whole movie. Good good uh, little hints in there of him being a robot because he like the whole movie he doesn't give a fuck about anybody. He's always just trying to study the alien. Sure. So I think the mission is them trying to capture that alien. So that's why they go balls deep into it because like they have to go study this alien. That's what the that's what mother told them. They need to go investigate. And that's, that's why they got woke up. And that's why Dallas said that uh, the scientists got switched last minute. Oh, I missed that. Dang. He said he went on a, like 15 trips with this one scientist, and then this time, last minute, they switched it to Ash. Yeah. yeah. That Mr. makes Milk. sense because they think they would probably assume that the alien is going to kill all the crew members and Ash is the robot, and he's going to be able to stay alive with this alien because mm. he, can, he can bring it back. That's why he – because remember when she goes in to type in mother, it like restricts her, and it says you need the scientist approval. Like the lead scientist needs, can only access this information, mm-hmm. and she overrides it. But that's showing that like only the the scientists can know the mission, really. Okay. All right. What else? You, what else you got complaints on? If you walk into a spaceship with eggs, and you first off, they don't know <laughs> what the mission is initially, so don't forget that. Like the the Mister Milk, the robot, he's the <laughs> one that tells them, like this was all part of the mission. That's like. Well over half the movie. Halfway over through the movie. Right. So they don't know this. They just go into the spaceship. They're not really thinking. I guess you have explained that they're not scientists, but it doesn't take like a true scientist to understand that if you're on a completely different planet and you see a messed up spaceship, then you go in there. I'll give them credit. You can go in the spaceship but once you see the eggs, you don't go prodding around in it. Who gave him that authority? Who who told them like, yeah, you should just go for it? I like, think Ash kept pressing him like, no, keep going, keep going. I don't think so. Well, because he lost communication with him. Yeah, and he was I think because he was telling him to keep going down. Like they were, they were trying to investigate what was going on. Like they they wanted to see what this is. So they had to investigate the whole thing. So they're kind of like, not all of them are scientists, but they're I doing like some that the mission is like, thing. yeah, you got to look like what it is but like once you lose communication with the ship i'm just thinking of like you're just common bro yeah i'm just thinking of common sense terms like if i'm on a distant planet and i lose communication with my ship orders are out the door i'm going back to the ship fair yeah so you don't have balls like like a mr alien stomach yeah look where his balls got him (laughs) <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see some eggs. And I'm not talking just one egg. Like you're looking at a bunch of eggs. Dude, you don't think Mother Dragon or just a bunch of eggs, like there's probably like another life form that put those eggs there. I'm getting out of there. I would definitely too. I'm definitely too chicken to be investigating some alien eggs. I was about to say, who are you? <laughs> Mr. Brave Guy, Mr. You're going to look and poke at eggs? Okay, no, absolutely but, not. But I get it. You gotta do it. But I think you're just criticizing the premise of the movie. I am crimis- Yeah, I am criticizing the premise of the movie. <laughs> I am cr- I am criticizing the premise of the movie. <laughs> Don't criticize it, bro. No, no, no. I, listen, it's it's cool. It's just, it's funny. And then, I don't know. They, obviously, we find out that Mr. Milkman lets them in because he's the robot and those are his direct orders. But it's just like, how long does it take for you to realize that you got this crazy species like wrapped up in this guy's face and every time you touch it, it like starts choking a little bit more around his neck and you walk in there? I don't think so. True, but remember, Ash is running it. He's kind of the boss man of the science. Dallas gives him full authority. It's like I listen to the science man on science stuff so, and Ash is you don't give a fuck about the crew. He just wants to investigate this alien. Even whenever like the alien falls on Ripley, it like falls on the ground and they're like, get the thing away from us. He's like, no, we must keep it to a- analyze it or whatever. You could say that, but he also says, he also says at one point, the only thing I care about is getting the fuck out of here. Ash says that? Mr. Milkman? 
No, no, oh, no, no, no. Ash Sorry. is Mr. Milkman. No, no, no. I, Mr. Milkman is, yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking about the captain that, like, keeps saying, like, no, just, like, keep doing what he's, like, telling us to do. Yeah. Because he, I think he has most authority on the ship. The Mr. Milkman? Yeah. At least at some point, he gets switched over once they wake up. No. It does. No, it no, says no. It on the on mother tells him that whenever Ripley becomes captain. Yeah, yeah. But before that happened, the main captain was the guy that was like able to give orders. And then once he leaves ship, it comes to what's the actress that lives? Ripley. Ripley. She's the one like, no, I am the next in command. It was like, you are supposed to do whatever I say. Yeah. But I think Dallas probably knew that doing the mission too. Because he goes in the mother and, and like reads the stuff and he's like, he knows, like he he obviously has to know the mission. I think he's just putting the mission first. He's a good captain. Like he just knows, he's obviously like, he's done 15 missions like Scott said. So he's like, you know, he's a very, very much, you know, listening to his company. He kind of does whatever the company tells him to do. Yeah. Probably. I think there's a lot of levels to this movie that we probably missed being first time watchers. It's also a simple movie. Like, I don't think it's super deep. It's a very straightforward, just sci-fi horror movie. That's just done very well, in my opinion. So it's not like, you know, I don't think there's too You don't many... think they left, like, any Easter eggs in here? I'm sure, no. There, there definitely is, probably. I mean, it's led to... Because the reason we are watching this is because a new one is coming out. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering, like, if they left, like, other clues to, like, leave future directors to... Like keep going off of this idea. The cat. The cat probably has an egg in its belly. Pilot Jones. Because you think about it, I, we, obviously we haven't seen Aliens and there's like four of the movies. So like the new one, we don't really have any, we don't have any clues for the new one. There's been like so many movies that Although, led up to that one. in the trailer, it looks pretty much like this. They all do though. Yeah. So the Alien movies are just about that alien. So I wonder if an alien, we can't speculate, but I, what is you this? Know, what am I looking at, Scott? Wait, you said they're all about the same alien? It's about that species of alien. Oh, I thought you meant... Oh, yeah, I guess he dies at the end. <laughs> Maybe. But he, but he, remember, he can survive in all type of climates, they said. It's true. He got but, like silicone skin or something. How do they know? Ash knows. Mr. Milkman. Robot genius. He doesn't know. They don't know. They do know. What do you mean he says it? He's like, well, they have this and this. He's been doing studies. They have like these... Top tier technology to scan the alien. Not top tier, man. They don't even have touch screen. <laughs> Dude, it's the seventies. They're traveling through space. They got some type of top tier technology. They did have cigarettes in the spaceship, so I uh I appreciated that. They also uh make sure their spaceship is safe from fire. You can shoot fire in the spaceship. That's pretty advanced technology. Forget gravity, because they've clearly figured out that you can be on a spaceship and Yes. Avoid that, or avoid zero gravity. Yeah, they have a gravity machine on board. Yep. Is that technology. ever get explained? Or is it just like no. Star Wars? They were just like, let's roll with it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Same with the fire and the Same cigarettes. Same with the explosion. And the explosion. Right, yeah. Yeah. Three explosions. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that ship is toast. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about the steps taken, okay? You see a guy with an alien, like, forget... Mr. Milk. All right, forget the robot. Like, okay. how are you as humans going to look at one of your guys get destroyed by an alien? And then, okay, you go in there, even though you know what the quarantine rules are. Right. Okay, first off, you don't let them in. Everybody knows this. <laughs> how is nobody else like... Who lets them in? Mr. Milk. But how come nobody else is like pissed off that that happened? Because they're all, I mean, at this point, they all have to know, like, priority one, if you go onto a planet and some living species or organism or anything gets in, like, they should have all been like, fuck that. He can't get in. This is, like, literally what they taught us. Right, but Ripley's saying no. Ash is saying, Ash lets him in. Dallas and the other chick are, like, saying, let him in. He's, like, going to die. Right. So they care and about they their people. No, but they should just know, like, no. This is crazy. We have no idea what this thing is. We're, we don't we don't know what planet we're on. Right. We just woke up here. But the but the other people on ship aren't in charge of that communication. They're not really involved in this mission, I don't think. It's just it's just Dallas, the girl, and the guy that got the uh, alien on his face. You think nobody else read the book? 
No, no, no. They know the book, but Ripley is the one that's making the call. She's the captain on, on, you know, on the ship while Dallas is gone. And then Ash opens the door. So before anybody can really like talk about it, it's like it's like a quick, you know, couple minutes of them talking and yelling. And it's like Ash opens it. It's like okay, I guess we got to deal with this now. And the other two guys, the other two guys are just like, just mechanics. They yeah, they really don't care about anything. They're not involved in the research process. They're there just to work on the ship. So they they wouldn't really be involved in the decision making of the quarantining. They have no say. They're like the bottom of the totem pole. Yes, but they would still understand like what the protocol would be. I hear you, but they're not involved in that. Like they're not there. It is just a movie. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying I, I think it makes sense make why believe. they open it up because Ripley's saying no, do not do it. They override her, they open it up, and the other two mechanics don't have any involvement in this decision or they're not even in that scene talking about it. And this has never happened before. You know? Yeah, they yeah. They're like, oh, what do we do? Sci- yeah, science fiction for a reason. I'm sorry. I mean, Hindsight, hating, bro. Hindsight 2020. I am hitting. I am hitting. You were on the you're on the edge of your seat for at least three times in this movie. I know because my common sense radar was just going off and off and off. I was like, how is this still happening? How do they keep fucking up this much? I don't know. I disagree because they do fuck up, but I, I feel like it's believable how they fuck up. It's not like it's like, oh my gosh, come on. You see an alien wrapped around somebody's face. Remember, they've been with them for who knows how long on the ship. They're all best buddies. They're all, you see them, they have such good camaraderie. Big scientists. They've been in space. They've understood how to survive in space for who knows how many years. Do we know what year this movie is set in? I don't think it says. I think it's 2035. I was about to say, I think it's in the 2030s. Okay. Anyways. So you see an alien wrapped around somebody's face. And you know that the alien went right through his spacesuit helmet. And you go in there with a mask on, like a like a weaker mask. You don't even have any other protective gear. I get it. 1979. It's all original. But I would have thought of something different. Would you have? Yeah, I would have thought, okay, they know that the alien got through that. They should probably have more protective gear on but now they just go in there cold turkey they don't know it's it's like a new it's like if they know that it went through his spacesuit and his helmet correct so it's like why would you go in there just like pretty much bare skin well ash goes in they all assume he knows what he's doing trust the science don't you know this (laughs) (laughs) um it was also 20 or sorry, 2,122 Damn. the year. Yeah, bro. Good to know. And also, you know, I was talking smack about the cinematography. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, the cinematographer and Ridley Scott wanted to operate the cameras themselves. Yeah. but they And they were offered to use a Panaglide, which is like a steady cam, keeps the camera level and mm-hmm. uh, smooth but they decided not to use it because they thought it would take too long to get used to. So Interesting. Like, oh, fuck it. Let's just hold it. Yeah. Some of the shakiness does help it with the, you know, intensity, but that's interesting. They just like, nah, fuck it. <laughs> too hard. I'll, I'll skip out on it. Yeah, dude, the set design is crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially look at this. That big skeleton in the, the yeah. ship they go in the first time. The skeleton's time. crazy, yeah. Like everything looks so well made, it's so believable. Every the ship looks great. The, all the alien look the alien looks good. All like the fleshiness of it because they used real flesh. They used like sea seafood, like you know oh. some type of fish and stuff to like make the alien when they're like flipping through it. It's like I, some type of shellfish. They they like you know cut up to make it look like an alien. And then even in the scene when they like when the you know alien bursts out of the guy's stomach and like skirts off. <laughs> They use real fish guts and blood. Mm. They so killed, like they popped it out and just like threw up all the nastiness to make it look authentic. Yeah, it was gross. Looked like they killed a man. They did. Kill also, a man. Uh, what were alien sightings during the 1970s? I'd like to know. Well, alien sightings. I think they started after the nuke up dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After that, I think that's whenever alien sightings started to pop up. Really? So this says, yeah, there's a big incident, the Val Johnson incident that happened in 1979. So, yeah, they, they people people have been seeing aliens. 
For how long? Like, when was this? 79. When this incident happened. Ah. See, the government's trying to, like, cover it up. Or is Hollywood? Um, let's see. When did it start? In the 40s and 50s, whenever reports of flying saucers became an American mm. phenomenon. Yeah. So it's been 20 years. Yeah. Now you got to get under it. Yeah, just make <laughs> it look like a crazy phenomenon. I like it. They're good. They've always been good. What? Alien sightings? Government. You're saying this movie's government propaganda? Oh, my God. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But this has nothing to do with Earth or alien sightings. Yeah, but it has to do with, like, what an alien could do. They actually started in 1450 B.C. Mm. On a stone tablets? Yeah, but they didn't have movies back then. They had plays. They might have had a movie. You don't know that. You don't know if they had movies or not. I guess you're right. Bro. That doesn't disprove me. Yeah, I think you're... Uh, I don't know why you're so against this movie. I'm not against this movie. <laughs> I give it an eight. Yeah, Scott but like, gave it a seven. I liked the movie. I liked it. I actually really loved when they were walking up to the spaceship. I thought that was really well done. Yeah. They used like the Star Wars technique, I'm assuming, with like, you can tell it's kind of like, it's not inspired by Star Wars, but they use kind of the same stuff to make the space look real with, you know, the ship like fading out through oh, definitely. the yeah. space and stuff. They use miniatures. Yeah, yeah. Because have you seen how they made, how they did Star Wars with all the different ships and meteors and stuff? Action figures. Yeah, well, they, yeah, they use miniatures and they literally filmed every single thing individually. It's like every little meteor they filmed individually and just like stacked it on top of each other. Yeah. With film to like make it blend together. Um, but yeah, set the de- set design crazy on this movie. Cause they, Definitely. I feel like they don't do that anymore in movies. Like they don't really spend the money to make the sets crazy. They just rely on CGI and and VFX to make it look real. And you you, you can always tell. I feel like. With, yeah, you you rarely see it. I remember I uh, I watched this this A twenty four movie, and it's Robert Pattinson, and he's trapped like on a spaceship, and I think it's all it seems to all be just like one set, kind of like how this film is shot. Yeah, but that was a real set. They built the set for it. You're it saying? Lo- yeah, I mean, it looks like every shot is him. Like you could see him like walking from a door like down the hallway to the next door. Like you can just saw yeah. high life. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Trippy movie. Um, yeah, but I feel like today they don't really do it, and you just... But if no, you can spend the time and it. money to make it like this, I mean, it had, this movie had to have won awards, right? Alien had to have won some like set design awards or something. Because, I mean, the effort put in is insane. Think about think about how you have to, like... Somebody has to come up with, like, how the ship operates. Like, all the little coding and how it works and the latches and, like, how the air vents work and all that kind of stuff... You have to like think about the engineering behind the ship to make it all believable, and then like inter- like build it all in its I'm, own thing. I was thinking that about the um, de- detonating sequence, like yeah. all those cylinders coming out. I'm like, wow, someone really thought that. Yeah, that's make, so. It's like out of nothing though. That had to be somebody's one job. Is like, okay, your job is to design the ship, like figure out how the ship works, and then everybody else built it obviously to make it look real. But yeah, I got an Academy Award for best visual effects. Nice. Yeah, because, again, there's nothing in here that, that looks fake, really, with their, their effects. There's some a little bit, but you got to give it some slack because it's the 70s. Because, like, even in Star Wars, the the effects are insane. But you kind of see a little bit of, um, you know, mistakes or not, not seamless effects. Like, when the lightsaber pops up, like, when Luke first gets the lightsaber with Obi-Wan, it, like, kind of cuts weird, you know, because they had to then put the stick on so they can animate it. No, but this movie, there's really nothing that makes you feel like it's fake or old. Yeah, it yeah. looks like that fire was real. I think it was real. It looked real. Um, and so, obviously, the suspense is insane, right? The whole movie is just suspense-filled. And they do a great job of just, like, holding it on things to make you just uneasy. Like, it'll just, like, zoom. Like, when they first see that giant skeleton, they walk away, it, like, fades in like just stays on that alien for a second so it's like there's not the alien i think that'd be an alien that's like a giant human right but it like sits on him like you know fade like kind of pushes in on him a bit so you feel uneasy or it'll hold a shot for a little bit longer than expected or whenever it's you know on ash 
and then and then uh ripley's talking to him you see ripley you don't even see ripley in the shot it just like stays on ash so you're kind of like there's a lot of shots that like hold for too long to make you feel uneasy oh yeah this must have been terrifying for people in the 70s to watch oh my god yeah because i mean again it looks believable so imagine the 70s you're like holy fuck that's why it's such a gigantic hit because people were probably so scared of this movie I got nervous. Did you? I got scared. <laughs> yeah, the suspense gets you. Not a lot of jump scares, though. No. I mean, when they're in the air ducts, but you know it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. What about the cat? Y'all like the cat? Yeah. I don't know if I like the cat. <laughs> it's, an, it's an odd, uh, it's just like a random little drop in the movie. Not really re- any real reason for the cat, I don't think. The cat knows how to, I guess, evade alien. Which, by the way, <coughs> the humans are the aliens in this movie. <laughs> 100%. Well, everything's an alien with that logic. What do you think the alien was thinking when it saw the cat? That's a fucking crazy alien. Yeah, okay, so the cat, I I do, because, th- like, it could be inferred that the cat maybe has an egg in it, because whenever the alien, like, looks at the cat in the box, it, like, smiles and, like, has, like, a like kind of twists a little bit. So it could have, like, seen it, like, okay, sweet, I can plant my egg in this thing. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, we don't know much about the cat. Doesn't give us, it just seems like it always, like, evades the worst thing that's happening. But I do think that the humans are the aliens in this movie. Okay. Um, How is that like a bad theory to just ignore? Because it's silly. That's your that's <laughs> your retort? That's it? <laughs> humans invade a planet. And like I said in the movie, they go to this planet and they see this ship that has been crashed. And I said, you know, the thing is, they don't know how long that ship has been there. Has it been there for 10 years, 10 hours, 10 minutes? They don't know. It had to be in a long time because that body was decayed. That the alien bo- popped out of, there's all just bones. So at be, least a good enough time for like, it to decay. Could be like alien acid that just like disintegrated it. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things that are just left for open-ended questions like on this, I think. Which I think it then helps the suspense because you like don't know. Yeah. Like you're like on edge the whole time. You don't know what could happen. Yeah. But Acid you could, blood. You're you like, could oh shit. You definitely look at this movie and be like, oh, the humans invaded like this planet. Just like the ship before them also invaded this planet. So like the humans are the aliens. You're, I don't think that's, you're saying that's the take of the movie? Like that's like. I'm saying that's a way that you could look at it okay. if you decided to. You think that ship is not those aliens? What was that ship? Giant people. Giant elephants, actually, is what you said, Scott. (laughs) They did look like it had some trunks on it. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, uh, it's it's like humans went there. They went, like, probing around, walking around, doing things that they really didn't need to be doing. And the ship before them was sending out not an SOS, but you're in danger type message. So it's like just leave like just ignore this planet but again you got mr milk who's fucking everything up saying like we need to go invade sounds like aliens yeah but mr milk being mr milk is obviously evil with the milk no no no. he's not evil he's a robot so that's the thing is that these aliens that are evil i mean in the story the bad guy yeah, but I'm just saying, like, the reason that the humans are the aliens in this movie is because they invaded this planet, essentially. And it not that they were at fault, but they were led or, I guess, deceived by this robot that they did not know about. You know, they didn't know he was a robot. But they get there, they start probing around. They didn't want to, but Mr. Milk is saying... No, you need to. Like, we have to. You know? That's why they're the aliens. Maybe. Maybe got a good deep thought there. Nah, it's silly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for admitting. 
No, I don't. I was just making fun of you. <laughs> so, but Mr. Milk popping in is a good plot twist. That was good. That got me good. Talk about good shots. That shit was creepy. Yeah. With his head covered in milk. Because here's the thing. <laughs> is it milk? <laughs> here's yeah. He here's, did drink milk or what looked like milk. It looked like milk. Here's the thing. Like leading up to it, like you think it's milk. We all looked at each other. We're like, oh. He's drinking milk. He's the villain. Right. But then it's like, damn, he's acting like an alien. Was he like drinking the alien juice? No. Robot. And then it obviously you find out he's a robot. That's just, it's a little weird. Like, what was that? Was that robot oil? Robot fluid? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But they set it up very well. It's like there's so many... If you look back, I always thought he was weird. There's always, he's always he's like you never to, emotional. Yeah. He's always yeah. robotic. Yeah, it's like oh shit, he is a robot. Yeah, but it was you know it was kind of leading it up to be like he was like a like a Frankenstein type scientist. You know, he was just crazy and like he just by all means wanted to understand what these aliens were as like a I guess like a deranged human scientist would be. So, I mean, it was a good plot twist. It made sense that he ended up being a robot because I think if you're a human in any given circumstances, like at any point in this movie, you would have been like, you know what? Fuck this. Survival instincts. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But he's just... They like, all kind of... They're like, Let, what the fuck are we doing? Fuck this alien. Yeah, he's get just... Picked. He's he's adamant about it. Yeah. Okay. So, before that scene... You see the guy that first gets wrapped up by the alien. He dies on the dinner table. And you see him kind of like lashing out or whatever. But you don't see him attack anybody. And then you see Mr. Milk. Which, by the way, I just want to throw it out there. I love that we just keep calling him Mr. Milk. <laughs> yeah. You see Mr. Milk like attacking the main character, Ripley. Yeah. And it's like, at first you're like, oh, maybe he's like possessed by the alien. But. If you look back, that's not what they're doing. They're just surviving. They're not trying to like immediately kill from the human body. They don't like possess like a demon. Right. So yeah. It just doesn't make sense. It's just, it's uh it's a good plot to us because at first you're like, oh, he's an alien. But then it's like, no, that's yeah. not what the first guy was acting like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. If like you, you falsely assume what it could be from yeah. the clues you got and then it's like complete 180. Oh shit. He's yeah. a robot. Yeah. Oh my God. There's aliens and robots. He, he, I remember I was going to say, he's, uh, he also is always leaving them in the dark. Like he will get on the, he'll call, uh, Dallas, Captain Dallas. And he's like, there's, there's been a s interesting situation with whatever the guy's name is. He's like, what is it? He's like, just easier if you come over here and see it. Yeah. You'd you know, understand he, it better if you saw it. He doesn't even, he doesn't explain anything either. So like, I feel like you can infer that Ash knows Mr. Milkman knows that, the egg is in that body. Cause like when you see him at the dinner table eating, remember there's like a shot where Ash, like he like turns his head and like, and like eyes him and is like studying him for a second. It's almost like, it almost seems like he might be expecting something to happen. Yeah. And then when they go to kill the alien, Ash is like, don't kill it or don't touch it. Yeah. And then it runs off. And they're like, well, fuck motherfucker. We should have like, caught that thing. We not? Yeah. Like, now we're screwed. Also kind of a dumb robot. Just, uh, I mean a little dialogue. I don't know. Something that I caught that I told Scott. I was like, this is kind of dumb. But he looked at Ripley and they're arguing. She was like, why did you let them in quarantine? Like, you know, that was against the textbook rule. And he was just saying, like, oh, well, I forgot that you were like the second in command after the captain of the ship goes off. He was like, but really, like, what would you have done? And I was like, well, she made it very clear <laughs> yeah. that she did not want him to be allowed in. Yeah, right. So there's like a little little rough patch there, but you know, no big deal. Yeah. Well that just shows you Ash doesn't have doesn't have a really good argument. He's just just a robot. He's, he's just, just trying like, to get past it. We're just we're getting this alien here because that's the main goal. It's also like if honestly if they could they could have left him left him in the quarantine zone and then Ash could have gone into the quarantine zone in like a suit. He didn't even need a suit because he's a robot. Yeah, see if he was a good robot why was he like allowing the humans to interact with it? Like if his main goal, think about this. If he was a good robot, think about this. If he was a good robot and he understood how dangerous this could be, 
why did he continually let the humans get interaction with it? Why did he not just tell them, like, no, let me deal with it myself? If he was a good robot, he would, he would just come out and say, listen, I'm a robot, okay? Let me deal with this. Y'all go up there, and I'll deal with it. It can't infect me. I'm a robot. Right. That's a good point. But he's he doesn't have any morals. Remember, he talks about, he like, when his head's chopped off, he's talking about, you know, he, he doesn't have a false sense of morals. He appreciates the perfection. Yeah. And he's even like, he's even like a little smart ass. He's like, you guys don't have a chance, but you have my sympathies. And like smiles. It's like, clearly you're fucking faking that, you robot. That's a terribly programmed robot. He, he doesn't have morals, but he keeps secrets. It's kind of weird. For the, probably for the company. For I mean, the company's yeah, sake. Yeah, but why would the company want all the humans to die? The crew's expendable. Remember, they don't care. They don't give a fuck about the crew. They oh, just want the so, alien. Okay, okay. So here's, I think, what we're getting at is that the company probably expected the robot to be the only survivor. Yeah. It, or if, yeah, they, yeah, they only, they didn't give a fuck if everybody died. If the robot was the only survivor, good for them. They got a million dollar, they got a billion dollar weapon. Yeah. Also, Another thing to think about. The whole, like, I feel like 30 minutes, like 45 minutes in the movie, you hear a couple of the characters just talking about, like, they deserve raises. Like, money, 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 money. Yeah. All right. Well, if we're looking at it as a Hollywood-type movie, they're wanting to exploit, like, companies that are, uh, you know, like, straight. Profit-driven? Yeah. So it's like last thing they want to do is pay astronauts to make more money. There you go. Yeah. That's a good point. You're right. Yeah, that probably is why they didn't give a fuck why about you, the crew. Why are you looking at me as if that's my first point? That's the that's a good no, that wraps <laughs> no, up what we were saying. Okay, that's a good, no, 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 I'm kidding. But like that is like I think something you could take away from it. Like they knew that if any of these humans made it back, they would have to pay them so much. Because it's they gotta Can you be, imagine taking that to court. And also, they, I mean, for that kind of, like, risk going into space like that, they're probably getting a fat paycheck. Yeah. And they don't want to pay them. So, it's like, let's just send the robot, which, by the way, we sent in last second, and that's the only survivor that comes back, comes back with an alien, which can't infect it because it's a robot. Damn, that is why they let the crew die, because they don't want to pay them. That's totally right. Good point. Damn. That was good. Thank you. Um, this is a side note, but I was reading about the movie and a fun fact with that cat. You know, like how they have the cat hiss? Pilot Jones. Pilot Jones. Whenever the cat, like, he's like creeping up, the mechanic's creeping up to the cat trying to find it and then, you know, the alien drops in behind him and kills him. Um, to get that cat to hiss like that on command, they had the cat creep in and they like had food and they put it behind a little like wall. And so the cat like is creeping up thinking that behind the wall is going to be food and they lifted it up and there was a German shepherd there. Oh. So the cat's like, <laughs> and, like backs up. So like, that's how they got the cat to hiss and like creep back to scare it. They just put a giant German shepherd behind a wall and just like peekaboo <laughs> scared his ass. Shout out to the seventies. I was actually wondering how they did that yeah. when I was, saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Little German sw Shepherd switcheroo, <laughs> classic. <laughs> the classic German classic. Shepherd switcheroo. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, because it's always interesting how they can get animals to do certain things. Because like a dog, you can train a dog to do whatever the hell. You know, dogs listen to you. They're happy to listen to the commands. Well, I feel like cat. the tryout for that, you know, German Shepherd, like it's pretty easy. It's like, all right, like, <laughs> how does your German Shepherd do with orange cats? Fucking hates him. All right. How does your orange cat do with German shepherds that hate him? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so the budget was eleven million for Alien. I, I read that the budget it was around like four million to start, maybe like five. And then once they saw uh, Ridley Scott's storyboards for it, they doubled his budget. Damn. They're like, oh shit, I see what you're doing. Here's five more million dollars. Whoa. That's pretty cool. And like again, I, like the seventies was the era where they let these independent, not these independent filmmakers, but they let these like newcomers come in and like really take the reins of their stories. So they see a good idea, they see he's passionate about it, then they you know fund the movie as much as they can. Could we see a original trailer for Alien? Yeah, I'm curious. Alien. 
Classic trailer. Here we go. It's amazing uh, the difference in like attention span they like assume the audience would have. Like that trailer took thirty seconds to start. Like the difference of the, how they edit trailers nowadays. It's like now a trailer's like boom, 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 and then it kind of yeah, fades in. They have this a one is like for the trailer now. Yeah, literally. Yeah, they hook you in with like a quick trailer, then they play it. This one took thirty. This like so. It's so interesting seeing how in the seventies people just would watch the full trailer. Nowadays people like they can't get past five seconds of the trailer if it, unless it like hooked you in. They didn't have a computer in their hand. Yeah, all the time. Just I gotta say, the I, uh, I'm very impressed with the trailer. Really? It's a good trailer. Oh, absolutely. Especially because you have to remember, Star Wars, I think, at this point, is huge. So to take the concept of, like, going to outer space, but keeping it relative to, like, humans on Earth, actually getting out there and showing how terrifying the vast darkness of what you don't know about space is i mean it's pretty good that uh i could see like why a lot of people were like what the fuck? and then ended up being as scary as the trailer portrayed it to be yeah and it's cool too because i guess it does hook audiences in at this time because they've never seen a movie like this so like seeing the egg and the space like what is this so like yeah them being like the movie being in space already hooks people in like oh shit it's in space what's yeah. this egg oh my god what the fuck yeah you know so it's it's interesting how it just hooks you in there I love the shot of just um the Ripley's <laughs> Ripley's butt crack in her underwear <laughs> just like they just threw that in good pause Scott that was like their one like uh like their one sex appeal yeah. just let's let's know. have a butt crack in there get by people the, really by going by the way rated R. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what they're showing. They right just wanted there. to confirm. Yeah. This is rated R, guys. How many F bombs did y'all hear? I heard two. Not many. I heard two, I think. They were a bunch they were casual F bombs. What did she say at the beginning? It was funny. It was when she said an F bomb to to one of the mechanics. You don't remember this, Gray? No. Damn. I remember the F bombs were not placed where i probably would have put them <laughs> oh my gosh like in a like i don't know like what the protocol is for a 70s r-rated movie i, I think it's the same i think it's the same yeah because i also think about like how we saw taxi driver a lot of like fuck up stuff going on in that movie yeah 70s movie too yeah so i'm sure it's the same it's all like the same kind of rating i'm, I'm sure it maybe gets more lenient nowadays Actually, I think the the original cut was like three hours long, and it was a lot more gory. It, yeah. So maybe maybe I'm wrong on the rating being the same now because I think they were worried with it being as gory as the first cut was, it would have gotten an X rating. Okay. So not a not a rated R. It would have been X. So they couldn't have, you know, it would have been hard for them to play in, in theaters and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, good trailer. Good nice, trailer. Nice butt crack flash. If you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh yeah, you know, I give it a I give it an eight. Got pretty final good. thoughts. Good movie. Yeah. I mean for a seven. <laughs> good movie for a seven, yeah. Good movie for a seven. Looking I mean, forward to having nightmares tonight. Yeah, it was it was drew me in. You got what you paid for. Horror sci fi. It was good. Check. Alright. Well, thank you guys for listening. Tune in next week to the Crown Cinema Podcast, and we're out. out. Well, I've been working like a dog trying to buy my next meal. Seems all I do is drive. And when the boss man sends my next check in the mail, I'll have enough for clothes and time. And I've been cussing like a sailor since I ran out of weed. My tank is